In this Warmaster video we shall take a look at the Dogs of War army. The Dogs of War were created by the Warmaster development team after the release of the game over 20 years ago. The Dogs of War are a fantasy mercenary army, composed of professional soldiers drawn from many different races from around the world. They are inspired by various European mercenary soldiers, who flourished in the medieval and renaissance periods from our own history. The Dogs of War will fight for any cause, so long as it is well paid, and it is not unknown for a mercenary army to switch sides during the same war, as their loyalty is only to the highest bidder. Mercenaries that live long enough to collect their pay packets are invariably tough, experienced veterans, while mercenary generals such as the infamous commander Bernhardt are among the best leaders of men in the world. The vast majority of Dogs of War armies include regiments of mercenary pikemen. Pikes are a weapon which require great discipline and training to wield effectively in combat. Pikes are the favourite weapon of the old world nation of Tilia which is a fantasy version of Italy. Tilia is a land comprised of several warring city-states, with the Tilian merchant princes always seeking to overthrow their rivals, and such conflicts always require a steady supply of willing troops. Therefore a mercenary will always find employment in Tilia, while the taverns and gambling dens of Tilia are only too happy to relieve the mercenaries of their hard-earned cash. Tilia lies to the south of the Old World between the other southern realms of Estalia and the Border Princes. Tilia is not a united land, with each independent city-state being loyal only to itself and its current trading partners. Despite their lack of unity, the Tilians are a resourceful and inventive people, especially when it comes to the art of war. On the tabletop, a Dogs of War army will appear as a variety of different types of infantry, supported by cavalry, artillery, monsters and even flyers, each with their own unique uniforms. The Dogs of War army features 12 troop choices, the highest of any Warmaster army, and 4 character choices. For every 1000 points you must take 2 units of pikemen and 2 units of crossbowmen. The remaining troop choices are subject to restrictions, but you can still theme the army around whatever troop type you want. The character selection is standard for human armies. Pikemen are your compulsory melee infantry choice, and they have the standard light infantry profile common to most human armies in Warmaster. However, pikemen operate completely differently compared to other types of infantry. Firstly, a pikeman stand faces the short edge of the base, not the long edge, in the same way as cavalry or chariots. This does mean that a unit of pikemen can generate a large number of attacks across a small frontage. The downside is that pikemen lose all other advantages to being infantry. They can never act as a supporting unit to a unit directly in front of them. They can never receive support from a unit directly behind them. Friendly infantry can only support pikemen if the whole of their flank is in contact with the pikemen unit's flank. And finally, pikemen can never claim defended status when in dense terrain. Although pikemen do count as defended against enemy cavalry or chariots, that charge them in the front, even if they're not in any terrain. However, it's very unlikely that enemy cavalry or chariots would ever charge pikemen in the front, as pikemen units have very wide and vulnerable flanks. This combination of rules make pikemen play like slow, weak cavalry. They're not very good at taking and holding objectives, as they gain none of the benefits that infantry normally do in terrain. They are easily outmaneuvered and are very vulnerable to flank charges due to the way they are based. And pikemen are 15 points more expensive than equivalent infantry in other armies. The only thing that pikemen are any good at is assaulting enemy light infantry. So if you can get them into melee combat intact, they will happily tear through enemy light infantry brigades with their large number of attacks. 
you can of course protect the pikemen's flanks by brigading them with other units of infantry, positioned in column formation either side of your pike units. However, this is a large investment in points to protect what is only a very mediocre unit in the first place, so it's really just throwing good money after bad. My advice is take the minimum units of pikemen that you have to, and keep them hidden away from enemy cavalry. Crossbowmen are your compulsory missile infantry choice, and they have the standard missile infantry profile common to human armies in Warmaster. Crossbowmen operate best when placed in defendable terrain and supported with other types of infantry, not pikemen. You can take as many crossbows as you want, and their shooting attacks can be used to break up enemy brigades and cause confusion. Crossbowmen also make good artillery guards, and because crossbowmen still have three attacks in combat, you can use them to launch surprise attacks out of defendable terrain against enemy units that stray too close. The crossbowman stat line can also be used to represent missile infantry units of elves, dwarves or halflings. Handgunners are your second missile infantry choice and you may take up to two units per thousand points. Handgunners are identical to crossbowmen but cost 10 points more as their missile attacks impose a minus one armor safe penalty to the enemy. Handgunners occupy the same battlefield role as crossbowmen do. But as they have armor piercing attacks, you may want to consider handgunners if you regularly play against dwarfs or chaos or knights. You could also use the handgunner stat line to represent units of dwarfs or even ogres armed with suitable black powder weapons. Swordsmen are your fourth infantry choice and they have the standard light infantry profile common to most human armies in Warmaster. You may take up to four units per thousand points. Swordsmen might represent Tilian duelists or Estalian sword and buckler men, Arabian corsairs or Sartosan pirates. The battlefield role for swordsmen is to provide cheap support for your other infantry units such as your crossbows or your heavier infantry. And the cheap cost of swordsmen means you can use them to build an impressive breakpoint. Try to keep the swordsmen away from the enemy hammer units and they will perform well for you. Ogres are your fifth infantry choice. They have a standard heavy infantry profile and you may take one unit per thousand points. Ogres are actually 5 points cheaper than equivalent heavy infantry units from other armies as they have a negative special rule which means they must use their initiative to charge enemy units of humans. So you must beware for clever opponents baiting them out with disposable units of human cavalry. Ogres can be relied upon to take on and defeat other types of enemy infantry and can also be used to assault enemy in defended positions especially if you give them infantry support. Dwarfs are your sixth infantry choice and they also have a heavy infantry profile but have one less attack and one more armour point than ogres. You may take up to two units of dwarfs per thousand points. Dwarf units might be younger clansmen seeking adventure and treasure or bloodthirsty dwarven pirates eager for booty. Dwarfs are a solid defensive unit, capable of taking and holding terrain against all comers, especially when they're defended. They can also be placed at the front of your infantry brigades to absorb enemy shooting or enemy charges. Marauders are your seventh infantry choice. They have a standard medium infantry profile and you may take up to two units per thousand points. Marauders cost the same as your pikemen, but in a straight up fight marauders would beat pikemen even if the pikemen charged. Marauders are a solid infantry unit but they suffer by comparison with the other infantry in the army as they're not as strong as the heavy infantry choices and they're not as cheap as the light infantry. The marauder stat line could also be used to represent mercenary units of elves, Cathayan warrior monks or even samurai. Light Cavalry are your first cavalry choice and you may take up to four units per thousand points. They have the standard Light Cavalry profile common to many armies in Warmaster and gain access to the trial rules for Light Cavalry from Warmaster Revolution. They are an excellent harassment unit with a 15 cm shooting attack that can fire all around. Your Light Cavalry could be Arabian Desert Riders or Marauder Horsemen or Kislev Horse Archers or even hobgoblin wolf riders. You can sacrifice your light cavalry to attract the enemy shooting away from your more valuable units, 
or you can send them behind enemy lines to impose the minus one command penalty and attack targets of opportunity such as missile troops or artillery. They are also useful for moving behind enemy units that you've just charged to ensure the enemy is destroyed when pushed back. Knights are your heavy cavalry choice and you may take up to two units per thousand points. They have the standard heavy cavalry profile common to most armies in Warmaster. Knights are your hammer unit. Use them to ride down the enemy infantry or take on the enemy's cavalry. Their armor save makes them very durable in combat but they are vulnerable to enemy artillery attacks. The performance of your knightly units will often win or lose you the game, so it's often worth investing in a magic item for them. Galloper guns are your artillery choice. They function in the same manner as cannon, except they have a shorter range of only 40 centimeters, but a greater move of 20 centimeters. This means your galloper guns can be brigaded with infantry units and keep pace with them quite easily, allowing you to redeploy them quickly around the battlefield. The downside is that you must move them close to the enemy in order to use their shooting attack. As cannon, they generate two shots per stand, which completely ignore the enemy's armour and ignore their defended status. A cannon shot will also bounce up to 5cm beyond the original target unit, inflicting an additional attack upon any unit bounced through. Cannons will cause massive damage to any unit they get to shoot that is in column formation. And as galloper guns have a better move than the average cannon, your chance of setting up this sort of shot is increased. Although they don't have the range of regular artillery, galloper guns do give you a powerful anti-armor option for the army. Giants are your monster choice and you may take one giant per thousand points. Giants are a single stand monster which causes terror and has an impressive stat line with 8 attacks, 8 hits and a 5 up save. A giant must always be given a separate order to any other units. But a giant makes an excellent bouncer for your infantry brigades. Even pikemen will benefit from a giant protecting their flanks. If you fail an order with a giant you must roll on the giant goes wild table which can result in him attacking your own army, but it's all part of the fun. In a Dogs of War army, your giant doesn't have to be a humanoid, it could for example be a giant elephant, or any other gigantic beast captured and brought back to civilization by the army. You can really let your imagination run wild with your giant model, and it's a good opportunity to practice your conversion skills. Birdmen are your eighth infantry choice. They are unique in Warmaster as they are the only unit of infantry in the whole game which can fly. They have a chaff infantry profile so the only targets they should be charging are enemy artillery. They do come with a 30 centimeter shooting attack however and this makes Birdman very good at harassment. You can fly them behind enemy lines and either choose to land them within 20 centimeters of the enemy to impose the minus one command modifier or keep them outside of the enemy's initiative range and use their crossbows to inflict drivebacks and confusion. As birdmen are infantry and not monsters, they can enter dense terrain unlike other flyers, which means they can gain defended status. And this, coupled with their ability to stand and shoot and the fact they can support in combat, means that birdmen can actually bounce enemy chargers. Just remember that because they are flyers, they can never enter woods and because they're not very good at flying, they can always be pursued by any enemy type. You do pay a premium to include birdmen in the army, but for me, due to the tactical options they give you, they are an auto-include. The Dogs of War General has the standard general profile for Warmaster with Command 9 and 2 attacks in combat. You are going to want your general to issue the key orders each turn, as he has the highest chance of success so be prepared to move him around the battlefield quite a bit. The most successful mercenary generals are humans, but you could always use a dwarf or ogre model to suit the theme of your army as you wish. The Dogs of War hero has a standard profile with command 8 and one attack in combat. You may take up to two heroes per thousand points in your army. Heroes should be used to keep your brigades moving. Assign a hero to each of your melee brigades to ensure they see combat. Your heroes can also be mounted on a griffin, 
which is a standard flying, terror-causing monster mount common to most armies in Warmaster. In a Dogs of War army, a griffin mount could be any large flying beast, and one of your heroes could even represent the mighty Asanil the Dragon Lord. The Paymaster is an additional hero choice for the Dogs of War army, and you may only include one no matter how large your army is. The Paymaster has a standard hero profile, but comes with the option to be upgraded to ride the Paywagon for 20 points. The Paywagon is a chariot mount that grants him a bonus attack in combat, and also a special ability that once per game he can increase his command from 8 to 9, which represents the Paymaster offering a bonus to nearby troops. This upgrade is well worth the investment, as it gives you access to two Command 9 characters for one turn of the game. The Dogs of War Wizard has the standard wizard profile common to human armies in Warmaster. You may take one wizard per thousand points, and they have an average command of seven. They make useful backline commanders, but their primary function is to cast spells. So you will need to keep your wizards within 30 centimeters of where the action is. Your Dogs of War Wizard can be a spellcaster from any human nation, or alternatively, an elven mage or a hobgoblin shaman. Taking a wizard gives you access to the Dogs of War spell list, which is identical to the Empire spell list. Ball of Flame is the first spell, it's a standard 30cm straight line shooting attack. Useful for sniping artillery pieces, adding hits to a combat, or breaking up enemy brigades. Voice of Command is your movement spell, and the reason why you should consider bringing a Ring of Magic. This is an excellent contingency spell to make sure you get the charge that you need to go in when you need it. Weird Enchantment is your utility spell. It is very easy to cast. It reduces the target unit to half-paced move and forces them to count all enemies as terrifying, even if they would normally cause terror themselves. It's very rare that you would ever find yourself having to cast the last spell, Teleport, but its one use is to remove your wizard if he finds himself trapped in combat. Because the Dogs of War army has such a varied selection of troop types, it can be quite daunting to decide what you want to pick. You can, of course, try taking every unit type in the army, but you may end up with a disjointed list that lacks focus. One theme you could go for is a heavy infantry list, and this may work well if your opponent fields light infantry types such as Skaven or Undead. Alternatively, you might build your list around the more mobile elements in your army, allowing you to outmaneuver slower enemies such as Dwarfs or Lizardmen. You can generate a lot of shooting with the Dogs of War list, so you might want to focus on this. Just be careful of facing enemies with artillery of their own, as theirs will outrange you. However, this is what my current Dogs of War list looks like. It has Knights and Ogres as Hammer units, Birdmen and Light Cavalry for harassment and mobility, Swordsmen for cheap support, Artillery for anti-armour, and a terror-causing hero as a false multiplier. Why play Dogs of War? Well, if like me, you grew up playing games such as Shadow of the Horned Rat and Dark Omen, you may want to recreate the adventures of Commander Bernhardt at 10mm scale. You might also want to recreate your Warhammer Dogs of War army from 5th edition, including all the regiments of renown as a Warmaster army. The Dogs of War are a neutral faction. They will literally fight anyone, anywhere. So if your opponents field a wide variety of armies, Dogs of War make a natural opponent for all of them. Dogs of War miniatures can easily be sourced from historical wargames manufacturers, and you can have fun experimenting with your own colour schemes and unit emblems. Dogs of War play very similarly to Empire, but they have access to better quality infantry, so they are a natural progression for an Empire player who seeks some variety. The Dogs of War army is by nature a jack of all trades army, but master of none. Although other armies will be able to outmatch your individual units one-on-one, -on -one, no other army can field the amount of unit options that you can. 
This gives you a variety of tactical options, allowing you to select the right unit for the right job in any given situation. The Paywagon is an excellent addition to the army, giving you access to two Command 9 characters for one turn. Use this ability to get your charges off, forcing the enemy to react to you. You have access to the excellent Empire spell list, and also to flying units. Finally, the volume of shooting you can generate is very high, and although it is of limited range, it does give you another tactical option, especially against opponents such as Chaos or Vampires, who have no shooting of their own. The main weakness of the Dogs of War army are the compulsory pikemen. They suffer from being a direct port across from Warmaster Ancients. Because in Warmaster Ancients, pikemen are quite good, as they invariably only ever face off against enemy light infantry, which pikemen can beat. However, in Warmaster Fantasy, pikemen will be facing enemy heavy cavalry and heavy infantry, against which they are not powerful. In my opinion, pikemen are around 10 points overcosted for what they achieve in the battle. So the Dogs of War army is always going to be paying the pikemen tax in order to field an army. Dogs of War also have limited hammer unit options as they have no fanatic units and their knights are limited to 2 per thousand points. Your artillery is also short ranged compared to enemy artillery types, which means you may not get as many turns to shoot with it before it's overwhelmed by the enemy. So what tactics work well against the Dogs of War? Targeting their pikemen is a key strategy. If you can get a unit to charge the flank of a brigade of pikemen, you will roll up the entire brigade in short order. If you have your own artillery, you will outrange the Dogs of War. Use it to target their hammer units, leaving them without any punch. Their knights are small in number and can be overwhelmed by your own brigades, and their flyers can easily be countered by leaving any of your own units on your baseline to countercharge them when they land. The strength of the Dogs of War army lies in its variety of infantry units. You can use this against them by forcing them to come to you, and when they engage your infantry with their own, launch a counterattack with mobile elements that you've kept in the wings. If you can force the Dogs of War army to fight in the open instead of hugging terrain, you will be able to beat them. In summary, the Dogs of War play as a toolbox army. Their units do not excel at any given battlefield role as other armies have better quality cavalry, better quality artillery, and better quality infantry. And this does make the Dogs of War somewhat of an underdog faction. However, it is the variety of troop choices which allows a good Dogs of War commander to deal with any given situation. So if you enjoy a challenge, and you're a bit of an armchair tactician, Dogs of War are the army for you. My bitch better have my money. She better have my money. Through rain, sleet, or snow. It was a Shakespeare. My hoe better have my money. I'm telling you, that boy's a genius. Tell it. Not half. Not some. But all my cash.